we're super happy to have you here today because we want to learn from your experiences on the question how we can enhance real youth representation in agricultural policy development. The webinar is a series and it's a platform meant to be to share lessons on the topic of rural youth employment and therefore regularly we invite different colleagues, different people, experts in this field of rural youth employment. As we all know, it's one key um, thing we have to do is creating jobs for youth in Africa, uh, understand their concerns, their needs if it comes to agriculture, and also um, we need to get them involved in agricultural development processes. Um, to hear, we need to hear their voices, understand them. So yeah, what is going to happen? First of all, I would like to really welcome our colleagues from Kenya. We have them from two different offices. There are some colleagues in Nairobi, some in Kisumu. We will start with um, some very short summaries of the videos we provided earlier. We start with a reality check, the situation of the rural youth in Kenya, which is done by Lydia. For you to run a dairy farm, you should have uh, enough land to be able to produce your own feeds in terms of fodder. But uh, in Western Kenya, we have challenges to access to land. So this has an option of uh, leasing. And also what we do, uh, we also contact the youth and women who does uh, the production of fodder. Then are we able to specifically maize and we're able to cut the maize and use it for the silage for the animals. We will now flash up our memories and listen to a short summary of Kenna's video input to provide us with a good understanding on GSZ's perspective on Kenya's rural youth and also understand GSZ's strategic collaboration of different projects in the country. Yeah, youth is, is such a critical topic uh, in a country like Kenya uh, where we still a huge population of youth and majority of them are in the rural areas who are still relatively idle. Uh, and that also poses a risk to security issues. So it, it highly uh, demands uh, urgent attention both by the public, uh, public sector and also by the development uh, organizations to identify ways of intervening on how youth could become much, much more engaged and more particularly in the agriculture sector where opportunities in the rural areas are, remain wide and more so for a country where with the increasing population and more so urban population, demand for high quality uh, agricultural products uh, remains uh, a major uh, thing. So uh, as, a, as a program, uh, as a development workers, this remains a, a key topic uh, for, for projects and programs. So now we want to look deeper into the question, how does the Kenyan government respond to the needs of the rural youth, which is now summarized by Shatrak in his videos. We are going to discuss about policy issues on how the Kenya government responds to the issues related to the rural youth in the agriculture sector. We had the National Youth Policy in 2006, which identified some key challenges and proposed some mechanisms of how to handle those challenges. Four key challenges have been identified at this time, one of them being increased numbers of the youth, inadequate access to skills development programs, inadequate access to uh, key services like finance, and key inputs to agriculture like land. Therefore, programs were developed after this youth uh, policy was uh, prepared. One of the programs that was established at this time, immediately afterwards, was the National Youth Enterprise Development Fund. And this was established so that youth can access financing so that they can start uh, agribusiness projects. Up to 20,000 euro was invested in this program. Another program that was started after this policy was the Kazi Kwa Vijana. Kazi Kwa Vijana is a soil word, which means work for the youth. And this was also meant to so that youth in the rural areas can be engaged in some activities and therefore they are paid so that they have some income. Also, another thing that was put into policy uh, proposal that was put across that had a direct bearing on the youth was Kenya Vision 2030. 
in which major programs and projects in the country were identified, through which invest, once investments are put into these programs, then the youth could participate, either through attaining jobs and things like that. Around this time also, the agricultural sector development strategy was also developed. And this, the, the key thing here was to ensure that youth can also participate in the agricultural activities. Still at around that time, the Kenya got its new constitution, uh, Constitution of Kenya 20, 2010, through which devolve, funds were devolved to the counties, which makes it easier now for the counties to develop youth programs because they are nearer the youth. The draft agricultural youth policy was also revised now in 2015 and also tried to ex expound on the issues affecting the youth. The National Youth Agribusiness Strategy was developed in uh, draft was developed in 2017 to further expound on the issues and to see how you can make youth participate more in agribusiness. So the key issue here is to represent the uh, mechanisms, good mechanisms to be put in place so that issues that affect the youth are adequately captured, not only in the agriculture related policy, in the agriculture sector policies, but in other related policies, like the policies related to manufacturing, which is in, that, in a way related to agriculture. So that's a key thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As highlighted in the presentation of Chakra, it's very important to allow youth to actively get involved into policies. Therefore, in the following summary now, Priska will have a look on GIZ's contribution to engage the rural youth in agriculture development processes. I think the key messages uh, from my presentation is that in the course of the validation process of the National Youth and Agribusiness Strategy, we saw that there is a strong need to create additional platforms between the national and the county governmental levels, but also and especially between these governments and the rural youth themselves to ensure that they actually get a say and uh, make a valid contribution to their own policies and programs. So what we did uh, together with the Green Innovation Centers was that we supported the counties in uh, the Western Region Youth and Agribusiness Conference. And in the uprun of the conference, uh, we coached and supported the youth groups to uh, self-organize themselves in a representative and legitimate uh, way so that they actually can um, talk towards the county governments on behalf of their entire community. So it became clear to us that we have to find a format or a coordinated gateway for the rural youth to appear like this in public or to be accessible for, for private sector, for county governments and so on. And we help, help them to form or revive um, youth and agribusiness umbrella organizations in their counties in order to coordinate communication or coordinate the selection of beneficiaries for certain training measures and in the future maybe even for them to offer services. Now we can actually use and work with these umbrella organizations as valid entry points. For example, one current activity is that we are with the um, umbrella organizations together identifying um, successful agripreneurs, role models, and also young people who are motivated and able to act as mentors in the region for the agriculture sector. So this is, of course, not the only solution, but we see it as an important and standalone approach in the region as an upscalable model that can help not only us as the project, but also in the long run to sustainably integrate the youth in the development of the agricultural sector. Thank you very much. As already mentioned by Priska, there was the Western Region Youth and Agribusiness Conference, in which we want to have now a short look. The Youth in Agribusiness Western Region Conference was hosted by the counties of Bungoma, Kakamega and Siaya and held at the Bukura Agricultural College. The event attracted more than 700 rural youths and other stakeholders in the agriculture business. We now have the big four, the manufacturing, the housing, affordable housing, we have the universal health care and we have the 100% 
food and nutrition security, which is the ministry now in agriculture. All the other pillars cannot work without the 100% and full nutrition, even universal housing, even universal health care. Some of the technologies that the young people need to adopt in order to produce well in agribusiness is ICT. With ICT, you can do a lot of marketing. The average farmer in Western Kenya is about 60 years old. I think it's you, the youth, who will try out new innovations, uh, who will take risks for even greater business growth. And you can change the face of agriculture in Kenya. We encourage such forums because one, we, it's a good learning forum whereby as a youth we are able to learn from other youths what they are doing elsewhere and uh, we are also able to showcase maybe what has worked for us, for the other youths to see and we are able to link with the county government, the national government and to identify the opportunities for uh, synergies and three, we are also able to, I think, create that network within ourselves as a, as a youth. We are, we are working with the Minister of uh, Agriculture that is under the ground government for technical support. We are working with uh, development partners like uh, JZ for supporting us uh, in kind or uh, helping us access some of this clean plant material from Calro. S seeing innovations, feeling them, it ended with a declaration of the youth that was handed over to the government and here in the case the governor of Siaya with the aspirations and with the demands of the youth in developing agribusiness and agripreneurship in their counties. This declaration is a joint statement. Bungoma, Kakamega and Sierra counties shall consider full youth involvement and participation in formulation and implementation of enacted policy documents for youth through gainful employment opportunities in agribusiness and related support services. That access to land and finances should be considered for youth agricultural development projects. That projects and funds targeting young agribusiness entrepreneurs should be given priority in, in the implementation of environmental conservation and management initiative. We commit to, one, participate willingly and cooperate with authorities towards developing policies and programs to enhance youth participation in sustainable agribusiness and environmental conservation initiatives. Two, we also commit to develop interest and be motivated towards developing and implementing agribusiness and related projects. For us it is a starting point to further develop strategy to support young people in agribusiness and the counties already sit together with the young people to develop a joint strategy. There's nothing that is impossible. We need to be patient, we need to be persistent in each and everything that we are doing. And also, it's not a must to get trained in a specific area. For myself, I'm not uh, trained in uh, agriculture, but I'm able to run a dairy farm. So let's have that urge of being more of job creators and not uh, job seekers. This is a very good quote by Lydia, and it's also now the perfect link to our two youth representatives and their perception on the youth engagement process that happened so far. To start with, we would now ask Oliver. He explains a bit on TSZ support in the country, in the preparation, in the countries, in the preparation phase of the youth conference. So please, Pascal, go ahead and play Oliver's video. My name is Oliver van der Falk. I'm a development advisor working in the food security program here in Western Kenya. Uh, prior to the youth conference on agribusiness, last year in May, June, the FSP was approaching the existing youth groups here in the target counties of Bungoma, Siaya, and Kagamega. And in a series of workshops, we briefed the youth on uh, important youth related issues. So uh, after that, these youth groups in the counties were busy formating um, umbrella organizations for all the groups in the counties where the groups and also individuals could join in. Uh, later, uh, just before the youth conference, the uh, county organizations were working on uh, county-based declarations who lead into uh, 
Joint Western Youth Declaration. And important issues, um, prominent issues in these declarations were sustainable agriculture, um, political representation and um, participation, and also exit strategies for upcoming programs. Done with the videos, but the most important video is still coming, and that's now the input from Gabriel. He was going now to talk about his perception of the youth conference. I'm the chairperson of Kakamega Youth Agribusiness Association. Uh, the, the Youth Association is the umbrella organization for youth in Kakamega County. It covers 12 sub counties. We have 240 uh, youth individual members. We have 10 group uh, members and we have also corporate membership that is still in, in progress. Uh, we have a vision and the vision for the organization is to be a pioneer in youth empowerment and um, sustainable agribusiness activities in the county. We also have objectives and uh, our objective mainly is to mobilize and promote youth in involvement in agribusiness, uh, network and link youth in agribusiness for social, economic and technological benefits uh, through, uh, to, in, in order to promote partnership and mobilize resources for capacity development, advocacy and act as a voice for youth in agribusiness. Uh, the reason for formation is in Kakamega County, uh, the youth saw the need to have the umbrella organization which is going to champion their issues in agribusiness because for a long time youth have not had a voice uh, to, is to air out their issues about agriculture and that has been one of the challenges that we have had uh, in, the, in the past. So the pioneers of this association uh, are the youth who are working closely with GIZ programs and uh, they came together in June 2018 and decided to form a youth umbrella organization. So through that process we have been also pursuing registration uh, through the government for legal status. So the association is linking with other associations in the other counties like Bungoma and Siaya to form a larger network. The activities of the association uh, include, uh, we have taken part in, in the youth conference that was held in, in, in Kakamega that accommodated over 800 youth from the three uh, counties, Kakamega, uh, Siaya and Bungoma. We are mobilizing youth uh, in the western region and through that we have been able to come up with a joint declaration as the three uh, county governments and in, in, in that we have, uh, we have engaged the county government and national government and we have been able to sign that declaration. In the joint declaration, the youth have been able uh, to identify nine thematic areas uh, to enhance agribusiness. And this includes their expectations uh, from both levels of government, their future engagements, and their commitment also to the declarations. Uh, we are currently uh, doing um, a mobilization and identifying star youth farmers from the county. And Lydia is just one of the youth farmers that we have, uh, in the, in, we, have mobil, we have mobilized. We have many others that are undergoing training so that we can be able to network them with other youth for the purposes of uh, learning uh, and, and mentorship. Thank you. Now we have time for questions to our guests from Kenya. Uh, as I can see, we still have we, some of our colleagues have some technical issues. That's probably because of the slow internet connection. But don't worry, all the videos had been provided earlier prior to the webinar on the SND website. We received 
quite a number of questions prior to the webinar that I would like to ask and discuss with you now. So there was one question that goes to you, Gabriel. Um, that question is about um, the reality check if it comes to getting youth involved with politicians. Um, as, as we saw in the video in the, on the conference, many of the politicians are very eager to really get the youth on board, get them involved. How do you make sure that the youth decision really gets into the policies now? So do you, for example, meet the politicians regularly in meetings? Yeah, what? And also the second question then would be, um, if you really want to stay in touch with the politicians and be involved with policy processes, what kind of support from TSZ would you need to be further engaged? Uh, youth uh, in all the three counties, they are engaging well with the political forum or the political leaders. And uh, one of the main things that uh, we are uh, doing to drive our agenda is to encourage public participation. When we are with the leaders, we are trying to ensure that we drive the youth agenda into them so that they can discuss it at their levels of uh, parliamentary sittings in the counties. Uh, we are also uh, having a voice. Uh, since we had the conference, we are having a voice through county youth office. One of the main things uh, that the county has done is to establish a county youth office, which we can also channel our uh, questions, we can challenge our ideas, we can share our ideas with them, and we are able to involve youth uh, in decision making and policy uh, framework. Uh, the kind of support that uh, we receive uh, is leadership training. Yeah, we have leadership trainings uh, which involve capacity building uh, for youth in all the three counties. And then we also expect that uh, we are going to have some uh, help through setting up uh, youth centers, which youth can use to exchange ideas and share knowledge. And that is going to help youth uh, to uh, get to a greater milestone. Thank you. There are good channels for the youth to be in contact with the politicians and also you require leadership trainings and help centers. Very good, thank you. So then there was another question um, that maybe um, can go to Lydia. Maybe you can swipe the, swipe the camera to Lydia so that we can see her also. Lydia? Here we go, yes, there we go. So that question, Lydia, would be, um, for you as a youth leader, what are the benefits to be a leader? Because, I mean, I imagine you are very, I know that you are a very successful businesswoman, but why, why are you a youth leader? I mean, is, is it good for networking? Are there some political policy ambitions? Maybe you can give us a bit of an idea what motivates young people to, to be a youth leader. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, what I'll say is uh, one of the benefits to be a youth leader is uh, you're able to get some trainings, that is the leadership training, the governance training, on the dynamics that youth are going through, so that you're able to understand uh, what the issues on the ground are. And also through the uh, uh, partnerships, collaboration, networking, and uh, linkages, uh, some of us have uh, gotten an opportunity just to be trained as uh, the champion of change so that you're able to also mentor the other youth on the possible ways on how they're able to generate income in agribusiness. Thank you. You perceive yourself and you see yourself as agents of change. I, I really, really like that. That's a really strong um, motivation. I can see that. Um, that also shows me that um, that the motivation to be an agribusiness woman is much about really making a change, which is very impressive. Um, I can see there are some people typing in questions. So far, we wait until they finish, and we, we have another question. Um, so that also would go to Gabriel. How are you benefiting from the process of compiling the youth declaration? Does it really make a change in your exchange with the county government? And that would be one question. And the second then that goes with it, what are the county governments next step now in order to guarantee the involvement of the youth? So we're talking about next steps now for the county government. Uh, the declaration that youth made uh, last, last year, it has made a lot of change in the way uh, we have approached agriculture in, 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 um, in youth. Um, 
One thing that it has done is it has created an attention uh, to the county government leadership and also to the partners. Uh, because right now we are seeing a great transformation in the way the county governments are dealing with youth at the moment. In Kakamega in particular, uh, we have had uh, this moment, uh, there is a launch that the deputy governor is doing at one of our youth uh, members of the association. Uh, he has been contracted to do um, brooding uh, of chicks uh, for the county government and it's going to be supplied to the farmers. So that is a very positive uh, achievement from this declaration. When we move to Siaya, we are seeing a lot of meetings going on between the county government and the youth uh, from the county. There are a lot of uh, commitments and promises that have been made and we are looking forward that they are going to fulfill those particular promises. At the same is being replicated in Bugoma County. So we can say uh, confidently that it's not just the talk, but the county governments are taking it seriously. And uh, I am sure, we are sure that uh, we are going to have a good relationship with them and even the partners. Thank you so much. We also had some connection problems, but uh, what I understood is that there are regular meetings happening, so there is an exchange continuously going on. And you also, what I also take away now is it's not just talking about youth participation, but they really, really want to get the youth voice on board. There was another question um, from one of our your colleagues, actually, uh, actually in Kenya, and he said the youth always complain about the lack of startup capital even after technical training. Um, that was a question now, now for Lydia. Uh, now, to run the dairy farm, uh, it was in a collaboration with a, with a relative who is an uncle. Still, finance is a challenge, especially to the, to the young people in the rural areas. And uh, what I will advise is there are so many models on how to access finance right now. But uh, I will encourage mm -hmm. the youth to be able to go for the zero financing uh, model where you are able to get uh, interest-free loans, or even just be able to start applying for the grants, which are able to facilitate you on your, um, on your enterprise. Thank you. When you choose the youth representatives in the three countries, how did you do that? I mean, how was the process so that you really have youth representatives in a legitimate way? So maybe you can answer to that question for me. Oliver? As already mentioned in the videos from uh, Priska and me, we were conducting these um, workshops on county level uh, in order to pre prepare the youth conference and also in development of these um, joint declaration. So uh, to identify the youth, we are getting uh, lots of help from the youth departments and the uh, extension departments from the counties, but also from our own GRZ uh, CPCs. So they were selecting and uh, approaching the youth uh, who come to these workshops. And then for CIA it was quite easy because CIA already had an existing umbrella organization. So it was easy for them. They were already established. And for Bongoma and Kakamega, on this workshop, because it was a quite a long workshop for one week, um, the youth themselves elected in a de democratic way, they elected the the leaders for the time being, that means these leaders now are like an interim leaders and later when the um, organization will be fully registered, they will do like a, a new election. So you have some, they, it's just a democratic process and they elected their leaders, that makes totally sense. And there's a more critical question also to our GSZ colleagues. Uh, maybe Kenda, uh, you can ask on that question. But now we, we, you, Throughout the whole process of the youth conference, you were thinking about different ways to improve youth participation. Um, but still, I mean, we all know the processes always have hiccups, and we always afterwards sometimes we think, how what could we have done better if we would do it again? So my question now would be, what would you do different next time in order to engage the youth? Um, in this question, I'd want us to respond it at two levels. At, first at the natural level, and then at the county level. I would want to request my colleague Shadrach, to respond on this question with regard to this lesson from the national perspective. Okay. Chadra, please. We all learned a few lessons from the, the, the way this conference was conducted, things that we could improve as we move on, the involvement of youth, especially at the national level, 
especially in policies and uh, strategies that are being made at the national level. The involvement of youth should be started early. It should take some time before, especially so that they can effectively participate in the policies. That's one of the things we, we found out from this conference. Kenna, you would like to add something? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, one of uh, another lesson we learned is that um, it, it it becomes more uh, uh, better when the youth are participate a bit more, and particularly for the youth who are already uh, involved in uh, uh, agri business activities. So because this is a, a really a focus topic that you don't just mobilize youth to you know to come together to discuss issues and to have them involved, but to ensure that uh, there's pro proper targeting of uh, the youth that are being involved and that they are better involved in the actual process themselves in deciding, for instance, who participates uh, and exactly what would be the content of some of the issues that need to be discussed. So this, when they play that role a bit more, then the, their participation becomes more effective and more... Shachak, do you think that the approach to engage youth that you have chosen in Kenya is repli replicable in other African countries? So what would you be your recommendations to our colleagues? Yes, uh, the method that we used in Kenya can first, can, yeah, of course, they can be replicable in other African countries. Basically, our engagement was at the three levels. We were engaged at the county level which is at the, the grassroots level. We also engaged at the intergovernmental level, kind of like at the, uh, the middle level. We also engaged with the youth at the national level, which is the policy making process level. That is very important for the youth to be engaged in and that can be replicated. Now, the youth here, apart from the participation, we also had the, the competition. And that was very good because the other youth are able to learn the good things that uh, other youth are doing and they are able to get motivated and that can be replicated. During this conference also, one good thing happened, the youth are able to interact with senior officials whom under normal circumstances it is usually very difficult for them to reach out to them and they are able to get to know them, they are able to interact with them directly, for example in this case we had the principal secretary for vocational training who, who interacted very closely with the youth and other senior officials, senior government officials. So, and also the, it gets an opportunity through this conference for the good things that the youth are doing, the role models to expose themselves and give them motivation and the other youth are able to learn from them. I think these are things that can be also be replicated in other African countries and we found they have a real positive impact on the, uh, the participation of the youth in agribusiness. Yeah, then there was another question, um, maybe that can also be answered by Shadrach. Um, what are the emerging policy issues that require immediate attention to ensure a conducive business environment for the youth? One of the issues that, some immediate issues that really concern the youth is access like access to finance, mm -hmm. access to the real real issue, access to land, and access to training opportunities. These are the real things that uh, affect the participation of the youth in agribusiness. So, and these are the key things that should could be included in policies and programs, so that every program that is being designed it in a way addresses how youth can access these facilities or these important inputs for agribusiness. For example, finance, you find youth do not have the, you know, the, the, the money that is required for, for them to, to start agribusiness. You have heard from our colleague in Western, she had to look for resources from our relatives. And that is usually a bottleneck our angle and to support her. That's usually the, one of the biggest bottlenecks for the youth. So if we have programs that are designed to make it easier for youth to get access to credit to these things, it would be okay. There was another question um, that maybe can even be answered by Kenda or Oliver. Um, and that would be how the GRZ project further supports this process of enhancing youth representation in the countries. We remain uh, focused on this. And that we and currently we are already working out a program uh, on how we continue engaging with the youth 
and one of the area we are in a mechanism for peer-to-peer -peer running. Uh, more from other youth uh, who are already doing it and have succeeded, yes. the opportunities for them uh, to adopt and uh, possibly to do it better uh, is more guaranteed. So this is one of the area we would want to implement uh, uh, or to work very closely with the youth to develop a uh, to uh, take them through these trainings and later on have a team of uh, youth members within these associations who can provide this mentorship to the rest of the youth. Yeah, in order to do, to create jobs, we also need to better understand the, the young entrepreneurs' needs. And we also need to understand that they are not necessarily all farmers, and they also don't need to be farmers. They are young, engaged people that have already maybe some business knowledge. But in order to run a really successful business, and that's what Lydia said also, um, they rather need a really good understanding of farm management, business skills, but also, of course, they need access to things as high quality inputs, access to land, and of course, finance. Um, so my uh, some take home messages that I would like to take home today would be um, let's start talking with the youth instead of talking about them, which was really nicely demonstrated in, in Kenya. Then let's get a better understanding of the needs of the youth, not as farmers, but as entrepreneurs. And also let's legitimate the voice of the youth through supporting them to set up youth associations, youth umbrella organizations, and also give them a role in policy processes. And only if this is done, youth are job creators in the agriculture sector rather than job seekers. We need the youth as agents of change. They perceive themselves as agents of change and they're really strong in that role. And also what we can see is if the politicians on, on the national level are really, really will to get the youth on board, they also do so, which was now again said by, by Shadrach and, and Kenda. It's not just empty words, but it seems like things really go on now. And yeah, um, yeah. Last but not least, I found it found it very interesting what you said that like on GSS engagement now for the future, which will be um, much focusing on continuously supporting the policy process of getting youth on board, including more peer to peer running, peer to peer learning, mentorship programs for the policy. Um, processes where youth are already involved so that we can continue with that process and also use these strong youth umbrella organizations, youth associations that are already established as role models for the future to yeah, motivate other young people to engage as well. Lukenda and all his colleagues are also with us, the youth leaders are still with us. Thank you very much everyone in Nairobi, Kisumu, all the youth leaders, also the one in the back. Uh, for joining us today. It was a real pleasure to have you here. Um, as I said, you had some technical issues today, but I'm very glad that we made the pre-recorded webinar videos because now everyone can watch them again. Yeah, thank you very much. And I say tschüss from Bonn. And yeah, looking forward to discuss you with you in the future. Bye-bye. Tschüss. Bye. Bye. Bye.